Project 8. Project 8 is the part 2 to the organizer you began in Project 7. In Project 8, what you're going to do is you're going to add a second form to the project. Uh, you're going to create a form object. You use the show dialog command to make the form appear. You're going to add text boxes and labels to the form. You're going to create default buttons that say add and cancel. And you're going to create event handlers for the add and cancel buttons. Plus, you're going to use objects and methods from the XML namespace. You're going to store text from text boxes as attributes of the XML element object. You're going to add an XML element object to the end of an XML doc document object. And you're going to save the data in an XML document object to an XML file. Then you're going to reload the data into the data grid and add a new field to the add item.h form. You can have more than one form in a project. This makes a lot of sense. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a new field to the add item h field. Well, first you save the data in an XML object to the XML file. Then you reload the data in the data grid. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a new field to the add item.h form. This form is going to be used to enter new items into your organizer. So on the project menu, I click add new item. So here I am on the project menu. I click Add New Item. Now in the New Item uh, dialog box under Categories, I'm going to click Visual C. In the Add New Items dialog box, I'm going to pick Visual C. Under the Templates on the right side, click Windows Form. In the Name field, delete the text that is there and click Add Item. Then you click Add. So now we're going to look at the uh, including forms. So you've heard seen the pound include command before to add libraries. Well, you know now that you can use the pound include uh, to add forms. So you can here see an example of a form here. You can see you have the less than and greater than um, carrots around the word summary. That's how you indicate a form. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the steps to include the add item form to my project. This is going to tell the computer that the add item form is part of my program. First I click the form 1H tab. At the very top of the code I click before the pound in the first line and I click enter a couple times to create two empty lines at the top. And then I type uh, pound include Add, add item H. Next I'm going to change the title bar text. I'm going to change the title from add item to add new item. So now I'm going to make this new form an add new item dialog box. So I'm going to click over here the add item H design. And I'm going to right click here on the, on the add item and I go to properties. So over here I'm going to look for the word text. And I'm going to call this um, add new item. And see it changes it up here. Now what I'm going to do is back to my form one design. And I click down my file. And I'm going to click um, here, add new item. Click enter. Then I'm just going to drag the add new item 
over my exit item. So now we've created a form in the project. We still have to create a form object. A form object is an instance of the form. Before we can use the form in the program, we have to create an instance of it. So we're going to create a new form object in the same way that we created the data set object in the last project. So this is an example, in this example here, you can see form name is the name of the form. Name of object is the name of the form object. So we're going to add a form, we're going to add an item object. So how do I do this? I double click this to add new item. Then I click enter. Then I type add item. Uh, then um, there's my caret, add item window equals g new, gc new, add item, uh, and close it out. Now for our object, we're going to use the show dialog method. What's a method? Remember, a method is just a function for an object. The show dialog method, what does it do? It tells the form to appear. This is what makes, this, makes the dialog box show up when you click a button or a menu option. So we've created the add item object, but the form's not going to come up and let, until you tell it to. So we're going to use the show dialog method on the um, next. So how are we going to add this function? Right after this last thing that we did, we're going to click enter. And we're going to add empty line. And then we're going to add um, the item window. So there we go. Add win item window with the arrow. Show dialog methods. you got to remember that the show dialog method belongs to the add item window form. Okay. The arrow operator in step three just tells the computer which form to show. So now we're ending lab one. So what do we do? We check our work. We check the code that we wrote. Make sure that we've um, added up here. Include the add item H. Come on down. Make sure down here you have these two things. You have you've added this. Add item and um, G, uh, GC new add item then add item window, show dialog. So this is what this should look at like. So the code in your form 1H tab should match this example. So on lab two, welcome to lab two. In lab two, what are we doing? We're gonna add buttons to our new form. We're also add text boxes for entering the text into the organizer. So we'll have these text and text boxes for the categories of our item. It also have add and cancel buttons for your form. You may be wondering, what is a text box? It's just an area of your program where the user can add text. It just looks like a box. So your user just enters text into the box by clicking in the text box and typing. The program is going to use this text for input. So now I'm going to add a text box to my uh, frame, to my design frame. So let me click on the Add Item Design Frame. Make sure the toolbox is showing. If not, turn it on. And we're going to come down here to Text Box. And drag and drop it onto the form. Now I'm going to right click this, click Properties. So right over here where it says text, I'm going to write text item name. There you go. Text item name. Of course, now that we've got text boxes, we need to add the labels so we can tell the person what they need to add in these individual text boxes. So now I'm going to add my label. So the toolbox, I'm going to find label. I'm going to drag and drop it here and I'll use a blue line to lay it to line it up. 
and I'm going to right click the label and then click properties. And I'm going to change the uh, text property to item name. Just like that. Now I'm going to add another text box and label. Come down here once again to a text box. Drag it right under here. Get another label. Line it up. Okay, I'll right click uh, the text box and go to properties. Give it its name, text category. Come over here to the label. Right click the label, go to properties. And I'm going to call this one category. Now it's time to add a button to the form. So we're going to program this button later to add an item to an organizer when it's clicked. So we come over here to, to um, button. And we drag it onto our form. Then we right click the button, click properties. Over here, call this button add. Now I'm going to come on down to its name. We're going to call it button add. And the reason we do an abbreviation here, this is just something you can do to tell you what it is. It's, this tells you this is a button, BTN. But it's something that you have, you know, your own thing, right? You can always name an object with an abbreviation for what kind of object you are. That's why you, we use BTN. just helps you remember what the object does when you look at the code later. Now we're going to add another button. Come over here, line it up. And we're going to call, right click the button, go to properties. And we're going to call this button cancel. And then we're going to go down here. We do is you call this. We're going to cancel. Name it, name it text cancel. And then we're going to come on down. We're going to find the name. We're going to call it button cancel. Okay, these buttons are what are called default buttons. Uh, the OK button is going to be an, an accept button. And the cancel button is going to be a cancel button. Those are default. Okay, they already have built-in properties. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my buttons default value. So I'm going, to, I'm going to click in the blank space of my add item dialog box here and right click. Don't right click a button. I'm going to go to properties now. I come on down. To my miscellaneous section here, right down here. Now it says accept button none. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that to the button add. And the cancel button I'm going to change to button cancel. So these are pre programmed um, responses to these buttons. So you're done with lab two, compile your file, and make sure it runs okay. Now we're going to build a couple of events. What's an event? Event's an action that's caused by the user or another part of the computer, like the operating system. So an event happens when the user clicks a button or presses a key in the keyboard. So we're going to look how a uh, program reacts to events. We used to have to use an event handler. Event handler you can think of as a listener in your program to detect when something happens, like a button being pressed. So the event handler uh, knows when something happens. And so it runs code written only for that event. So in this example, when a button is clicked, the event handler for that button, it's going to run that button's event handler code. 
In Visual C++, when you double click certain kinds of objects like a button, an event handler section of the code automatically is created for that object. So now we're going to add the event handler to the button. So I'm going to click on the double click the cancel button. I'm going to click enter. And I'm going to click close, make a close function there just like that. So now I do the, other, the same thing to the other um, button. So I click up here, I double click add, click enter, and I type the same thing, close. So now we're ending lab two, so we want to make sure your code and the add item H tab matches this example. So you come on down to the bottom and make sure that you have um, your close here after this first event and the close here after the second event. Make sure it reads just like this and then you can compile it and make sure your program works. Now what we're going to do in lab three is we're going to use objects and methods from the XML namespace to store text from the data uh, from the text boxes as new items in our XML file. So the program is going to add an item to the organizer and show the new item in the data grid. So in lab three, what are we going to do? We're going to use the XML namespace, right? So we're going to have to um, add the library. So I'm going to right click here. I go view code. I come up to the top. I want to add the namespace. So I'm going to go click, click enter. Then I'm going to type using namespace system XML, just like that. Right like this, okay? So we're adding the names the XML namespace here. We're going to make an XML document. So it's just an object that's designed to hold XML data. So how do we do that? Uh, the code for creating an XML document is just the same as um, creating a data set, or it's similar to it, or any other data managed object. So we're going to look at creating a XML document object. Notice we're still in the add X to my add item H file. So we come all the way down to the end. Remember we did this last lab. I have the close here for the cancel and the close here for the add. I want it in the close, the second close. So I click a couple enters and I type in, we're going to open up an XML document. Um, so we're going to, so here you go. This is what it looks like. XML document. It's called data file and we're going to make it new. So now we're going to have to need to use the load method for the uh, data file. So right here we have the data file object. And what method is it going to use? It's going to use the load method. So where's, what's it going to direct, grab data from? It's going to load data from the data.xml file. So now to add that uh, load method to my file, what I got to do is right after what I just typed, I clicked enter and I'm going to type in data file load data into the data XML file. So what do we do? This code we just added loads the data XML file into the XML document named data file. So this is what the structure of that type of command looks like. So your XML object right up here stores information for one and XML element. So the code creating uh, the code that creates XML object looks like this. Um, the object name is what you name your XML object. XML document name is the name of your XML document object. An element name here is going to be the name of the element object. So now to add that XML element, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this line which I wrote data file, uh, load data XML, make a new line. And I'm going to type in XML element 
new item is equal to data file point to create element and we call that element item and close that with a semicolon so I want to load the data that, that the user typed into our text box and put it in our XML file, right? So to get the text in a text box um, with the value, the programmer has to use a code that looks like this example. Okay, this is the current form that the code is in. Okay, that's all that it refers to. This text box name, text box name, that's the name of the text box itself. And text is a variable that store what people type into that text box. So now I'm going to use a set attribute method. What's that? All the set mat at attribute method do is it gives a value to an attribute of the XML element object. Okay, in this example up here, the XML, XML um, element name is the name of an XML element object. Okay, that Attribute name, it's the name of the attribute, right? Value is whatever value you give to the attribute. So I'm now going to set the values. So I click enter. And I'm going to write new item, set attribute. I named this text item text. So what do I do? Um, I just set the um, both at, I got to set two attributes. Um, this first one I set was we're identifying the item name for one text box. Now we're going to do the category. We're going to identify the category. So I click enter again and I write um, this new item, we're going to set the attribute of what? Category. So we're going to uh, have whatever this item is. It's going to have an item name and a category, right? Now if we want to add something to the end of an XML document object, we have to use the method append child. So in this example, data file is the XML document object you created earlier, right? Document element helps the computer figure out where this XML element is going to go. And new item is the name of your XML element um, object. And this is how you're going to write it. And where are we in this code? We're in the event handler uh, for the add button here. And you find that the add, the, the add button that you just added Find the line new item, set attribute, category, this, that we just typed in. Okay, under this, click enter, and we're going to type data file, arrow, data ele document element, arrow, append child, new, new item. So let's look at that. So this is what we did. We added this line, data to file arrow document element arrow append child new item okay when you're finished with all your data entry of course you want to save your file so you're going to have to add a save uh, method to your code what the save method does is it just saves your XML document object with into the, your XML file so this just allows you to update the data XML file with the information about the new item you just added you know, in this example, data file is your XML document object. Data.xml is the same XML file you've been working with since the last project. So now we want to save the information stored in the data file to your data XML file. So what we do is after this particular line we just added, click enter, and we go data file arrow save. We're going to use the save method, and we're going to save it to what? the data XML document. So it looks like that. Data file, arrow, save. Save to what? The data XML file. We're almost done. We're at the end of lab three. We've got one more lab. So let's check our file here. So where are we at? Um, 
we're here at the add item dot h tab and we call them all the way to the bottom and now we're where we're in this add not in the cancel button code we're in the add button code right below that so make sure that it, that this is in the right spot so you have all this stuff you add in this lab right here <laughs> make sure it's all there that you added it to the right place and um, you're ready to go for uh, lab four so now you want to test your program you want to find out if you uh, if your add new button form adds a new item correctly if your organizer program isn't running go to the debug menu and click start without debugging in the organizer program go to the file menu and click add new item type in the values for um, type in the values for item name and category this is your chance to add a new item to your organizer so type in something you want to keep and then click add okay your program's not going to show the new item right away and you're going to fix that later in this lab but uh, to see your new item was added to your data XML file, run your program again by going to the debug menu and clicking start without uh, debugging. If you don't see your item, review the steps in this lab to catch your mistakes. So now we've got to deal with the other button, the clear button. So we're going to use the clear method. All the clear method does is it deletes all the data in the data set object. Your data set object, that's just the data grid that lists the items in your organizer. And you're going to need to clear this list before you can update it with the new one. So you're going to use a clear method to clear the list on the next, uh, coming up. So now in order to clear the DS list data set objects data, what we need to do is we need to go to the form 1H. And we need to go all the way down to the bottom, all the way down, almost clear to the end of the file. Right after this last one, it says, Add Item, Show Dialog. Now we're going to add this code right after this. So we, we typed in this, arrow, DS list, um, arrow, clear. Remember, this is the Form 1H, not the Form 1H, I mean, not the Add Item, H form. So what we're going to do next is we're going to read the XML files. The first line of code here reads the data um, XML uh, file and stores the information in the data set, the data set object DS list right here. Second line of code tells my grid to get its data from the DS list. The third line of code tells my grid that it should use the item elements from the data XML for the information it shows in each row. So that's what we're going to be doing. So underneath this code I just added, I'm going to add three more lines of code. So I'm going to add this line of code here. So we're reading the XML data file. So what are we doing? We're adding code that's going to read the data in the data XML file and then load that information into the MyGrid objects. We have another line here. And we got one more line. So now it's three lines I've added. I've added the, this, this what? DS list, read XML, data.xml. So I'm reading that into that file. Then the my grid data source DS list. And then I'm going to um, put thy grid data member item. This is the code here that I just added. Once again, why did I do this? I'm just adding the code. It's going to read the data in the data.xml document. Then I'm going to load that information into the my grid object. 
Okay, before we go on in lab three, make sure you've done all this. At the bottom of your Form 1H, uh, make sure that you've added these four lines of code. Okay? So finally, we're in lab four. We're going to add a new column to our project. So at the end of the lab, the program's going to three, show three columns of information and let a, add, a user add three pieces of add information to the Add New Item form. You can think of uh, items in your database here that you've been creating as fields. Fields are smaller parts of the, of the unit data. So you have a, um, your category field, right? You have here your director field. Here you have your item name field. So um, there's many other items that you can, other fields that you can add your to your organizer. So whatever you need to name your extra fields is up to you. Just think it out. Now here's an example of something that they did in this example, but you can what, put whatever field that you want in whatever you're planning to organize. It's your, um, it's your database. You plan it. You organize it. So now what we're going to do in the Solution Explorer on the left hand of the screen we're going to double click the uh, data XML to open the file. Click just after the last quote mark in the, in the first item element. There should be a cursor be, uh, space between your cursor and the slash uh, lesson symbol. You press the space bar, then type the name of your new field, followed by an equal sign, and the quote marks appear automatically. You so see, I typed in here the word value. Remember, if your field name here, I put value in here, but if yours happen to be two words, don't forget to use an underscore between the words. You want to make sure all those fields have a value now. So go through all your fields and add, the, add a value. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to match variable names. So you need to move the same information through several different variables. So in this project, you can get data from a text box, then store it in an attribute of an XML element. That same data moves through the text box field variable and the XML attribute variable. To make your code easier to understand, you must use the same variable name for both the text box field and the XML attribute. Okay, so both of these have to be the same. Okay, the text box field will have a text in front of it so you know which is which. So you have here this category and here text category so you can tell which one is the text box. So you're going to add a new field to your add item.h form next. So now I'm going to add a new category to my form, add item design. So now I go get me a text box. And come down here, right click, go to properties. And I kind of call it t text, oh, I don't know, field. Click enter. And now I'm going to go up here to a label. Put a label up. And we'll call this, lab this label three field. <laughs> How about right click, properties. Just call this field. Now remember, this is anything you want to put here. So if you're organizing your music items, this might be, say, song, and maybe this is a category, might be a musical, right? Then you have another field like down here, which you could add composer. This is whatever you want to do, whatever you want to make it. I just added arbitrary fields here. And once again, you line it up with the red and the um, 
blue lines. So we're going to add the uh, code to the item H, the, to the add item H tab. So I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to edit the add, add, uh, add items form code. So I'm going to find the event handler code for the add button. It's toward the bottom of the code. Um, it's right by the button add click in it. So I add an empty line after the line new item set attribute category this text category text line. So on the new line I'm going to type new item set field field this text field text. I'll show you. So it's going to be whatever you want to add. So you know Whatever you call that field name, just put it in there. Whatever you call the text field name, put that in there, okay? It's going to, it might be different from what I put in there. And before we move on, you want to make sure that your work resembles this stuff. So remember, you added it right here in your Add, add Item H tab. So make sure that it looks like this. Make sure that this matches what they have here in Lab 4, okay? Now if you want your program to work, what you've got to do is you've got to um, move a copy of the um, XML file into your debugger. So let me show you how that works. Um, you uh, go find your organizer project. You open it up. You go into your organizer. And you go find your XML file right here. So I right click the XML file. I click copy. Then I go back into my organizer and into debug. See, I go back up. I go into my debug file. And I just paste a copy of it in here. So that's what I need for my um, ex executable to be able to run my file. So if you just send me the executable, it's not going to work. You at least need to include with it your data XML file for it to work. So now you're done uh, with the project date and you're done with the C++ course. So if you want a challenge, what you can do is you can go to my organizer and add a new button that adds a new item or that closes the organizer.